Okay, so in this section of the video, let's do just a quick review first of, of uh, basic download restrictions. So at level zero, I'm allowing two files every 30 days. And at level one, my premium members, they're going to have unlimited file downloads every 30 days. Okay, but what if I have a specific set of files that I want to allow only at level one? So as a free subscriber, you'll be able to download two files every 30 days, but you'll have a limited selection of those files that you can download. In order to download any file on the site that you'd like, you'd have to upgrade to level one. Okay, well, I can't do that with basic download restrictions because this is all about the download counts. It doesn't allow me to separate the actual files themselves. But doing that is actually very simple, and I'm going to show you that. But in order to explain it in greater detail, I'm going to switch over here to the S2 member API scripting section. And you can get here by going to the S2 member menu and just scrolling down and choosing API scripting. And then what we're going to do is find this subsection called Custom Capability and Member Level Files, where it talks about how to accomplish this. And I'm just skipping right down here to the relevant section, Membership Levels. Okay, and here I can see that all I have to do is just create subdirectories. Okay, now although inside of your S2 members, inside of your S2 member files directory, this is the security enabled file directory. You can create any type of subdirectory you like and organize your files however you, however you like to do that. However, we can see here that there are certain subdirectory names that are, that are special. And this is a list of those special names. Okay, so if I wanted to protect files from, I wanted to make sure that uh, certain files required level one, I create this access s to member level one subdirectory. And then here it's showing me how to use the protected, the protected directory. So if I had a file named zebra.pdf, I could upload zebra.pdf inside of this special subdirectory. Okay, and now whenever I create my link, which is what this is showing you down here, so if I created a link to zebra.pdf, okay, I would use the same format we discussed in the previous section. It's just the location of the file relative to the S2 member files directory. So here it's just access S2 member level one slash zebra.pdf. Okay, so now if a, if a level zero subscriber, a free subscriber at level zero, were to click this link to download zebra.pdf, they're not going to have access to level one. Okay, so in this case, S2 member is going to be looking at actually three different things. The first thing it's going to do if, if a download link is clicked is it's going to see, okay, is the customer logged in? Are they even logged into the site? And if not, they'll be redirected to the membership options page instead of being allowed to download the file. The second thing it's going to look at is, okay, if they are logged in, are they within their download count limitation? Okay, and if they are, are over that limit, they'll be redirected to the download limit exceeded page. Okay, so, but if they're, if they're within the limit, okay, then the next thing our member is going to look at, okay, is the file inside of one of these special subdirectories? And if it is, as it would be in this case, is the customer does the customer have the capability to download this file, or do they have access to level one? And if they do, it'll allow the file download. And if they don't, then they'll be, again, redirected to the membership options page. Okay? So this is great. This is exactly what I need. Okay? Now I'm going to switch over here real quick to my FTP application, just so you can see there's those two subdirectories. And all you do is just right-click here, choose Create Directory, type in those special names, and create those subdirectories. And so, just as an example, I uploaded a file called zebra.pdf. So that's how you would do it. Okay? Now, I'm going to switch screens again and go back and show you something else that's very interesting. Okay? If a level zero subscriber were to click this link, what would happen? Okay, they would be redirected to the membership options page because they would not have access to level one. So they cannot download zebra.pdf. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this tab over. And this is the front end of the site. This is the membership options page. So in this example, I have arrived at this page because I clicked the link, logged in at level zero, and I pulled this page up here uh, while we were pausing for this next section. Okay, so I arrived at this page as a result of trying to download zebra.pdf while I was logged in at level zero. So S2 member, instead of giving me the file, it redirected me here to the membership options page. What I want to point out, and this is true no matter, it doesn't matter whether S2 member redirected a customer here as a result of a file download being denied, or if they tried to click a link on your site somewhere and they were denied access and they were redirected to the membership options page. Whenever they arrive here as a result of clicking a link, 
on your site, whether that's for a file download or not, and S2 member redirects them to the membership options page, S2 member will always pass over this variable in the URL. It's called S2 member level required, and it'll always be equal to the level that S2 member has determined or that you have configured that is required to access whatever it is that they originally clicked on that led them to the membership options page as a result of that. Okay, so this variable is always passed over, and in the case of a download, a file download, this additional variable is passed over, and it will say, and S2 member file download requested equals, and it will be equal to the file that the customer originally requested, that they were denied access to for one reason or another. Okay, so why is this important? Well, it's really not by default, because S2 member does not make use of these variables. All it does is it simply passes this information over to your membership options page so that if you'd wanted to make use of that, that information, you could as the site owner. So if you're an advanced user and you know how to make use of these query string variables, or if you have a developer working with you, uh, then he could make use of these variables. And in one example, what you might do in this case, with this information, you could display a custom alert on the membership options page like I've implemented here. So what I do is I have a code snippet I have the exec PHP plugin installed, and I have a code snippet that went into my membership options page. And it, and it just runs a conditional, and it says, okay, if these two variables are passed over, I'm going to display a custom alert here, a more informative message to the customer that says the file, zebra.pdf, requires premium membership. Okay, and I can determine that information just from these two variables. So you can see how this is one example of how you could use these variables to provide a more informative message, more customer-friendly experience, and so now the member knows for sure when they clicked on a link to download a file, they're redirected here and they know, okay, I need, I want this file. I can see it requires premium membership. So it's very clear. And so this is uh, very likely going to lead to many more sales for you because it's now much more clear as to, as to what the customer actually needs to do rather than them having a selection of options and they have to figure out which one they need. You can, you can tell them specifically which level they need to sign up for in order to gain what it is they're trying to, to access. Okay, so that is that is how you separate S2 members restrictions and, and how you separate your files into specific uh, capabilities where they where one customer has to be able to uh, have access to a specific level to access a specific file that you've uploaded. Okay, in the next section we're going to cover advanced download restrictions, and we're gonna, that's going to entail uh, download keys, and we're also going to cover inline file extensions, which those two working together are extremely powerful. And uh, they're actually not that difficult to implement. Uh, so we're going to cover that in the very next section.